because that's what... This is Richard White with a brief example of differentiated instruction in an AP computer science class. Wondering, my friend Aaron is I'm an experienced educator who is teaching AP computer science for the first time. The class of 18 students has a wide range of abilities and need varying degrees of support. This five minute video shows one way to structure a single assignment. In this case, taking a digital photograph and writing a program that will make it blurry so that students of different skill levels can all work on the same assignment. General idea, tell me what the general idea is. Do you know how big your picture was? Um, no, no idea. How many pixels it was? No, no idea. Well, we can get that. Here, students participate in a whiteboard-based discussion. Laptops are closed, and references made to topics already discussed. Once you knew the height was some value here, and the width was some value here. What was the loop that you had set up to run through the pixels and do the evaluation? For int And did we go through rows first, I think? Uh, yeah, I think, was, I think so. row first. You for row starts at zero. Row no, was yeah. less, less than, than height. Right. Less than or equal to height? Just less than because the height is some full number and we're starting at yeah. zero, so less than height, good. Row, row, row plus, plus. Row or, oh yeah, row yeah. plus plus. Yep, row. And then four. Row plus one as well. That would be an off by one. Now a refinement of the problem is introduced with initial references to general coding strategies. Advanced students may be already thinking of specific solutions and are ready to begin coding. Yeah. You guys got your computers open and started typing. Oh, good for you. Taking notes. Good. OK. <laughs> <laughs> column minus 1 going all the way over to column plus 1? Yeah. Less than or equals to, so we'll do this while i is less than or equal to column plus 1. We'll go up each time. And now, Henry, here's our here's our concern. Now we gotta do the ifs. I gotta do my if. I'm only I haven't done anything. I haven't actually tried to get a pixel yet. I'm just playing around with variables right now. But I'm only gonna want to get that pixel there if I've got a legal pixel to get. How do I know if I and J are referring to a legal pixel? If, if, if column does not equal zero or the width? No, because column's okay. Column is only going to run from legal pixel to legal pixel. Right. It's I and J that are referring to my new. I uh, know. Instead of this guy, we're going to. Almost immediately after students are released to begin working on the program, a template is offered to students who want some structure. In this template, the general solution is outlined, but significant parts of the code must be completed by the student. And you're going to have to do a little bit of research to figure this out, to figure out how to do this. You can look in the picture class, which you already have a copy of, to figure out how to create a blank picture. There's information how to do that. I don't want to stifle your creativity if you want to go there. If you want a little bit more structure, though, you can go online. You can get to the public folder and download blur, studentblur.java from the public on our server. And that will give you, it's got some of these pieces here, but it's missing a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to have to fill in. But that may be a, a little bit of a jump start if you want to avoid some of the, oh, i got to dig through the API now. All right? Take a few moments to work on that. See how much of blur, .ja, or blur Java, student blur Java you can get going. And I'll check back in with you in a few minutes. All right? This is going to be a little bit challenging. This should be good. It's in the public folder. Yep. No, it's there. Now you can say it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go ahead and put, once you download the blur, uh, blur.java, you can put that in your the same package folder. So it's there because it needs to have the picture class with it. So it'll work. So go ahead and keep all those together in the same. Put that <laughs> oh yeah, there is that. Well, then it shouldn't go on. Exactly. Okay, so. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. 
because that ends up coming in. I mean, if in in your if loop that everything works out perfectly fine, you don't even need that. But in the ones that it, it's not the case. No. Exactly. While the template is projected on the whiteboard, the teacher begins inserting missing lines of code, as well as walking around the room helping individual students. Students are free to copy from the template and ask development questions. We'll still be on the border. We're, we're still yeah. averaging right there. Competition? You have no idea. Um, <laughs> what was that? No, I, I understand why you need it. Right. Definitely. Just you, you don't. Ne I was working on it before. Okay. So you're. you're I, had, I hadn't board. encountered that issue yet. Henry Makes sense. No, no, Henry. <laughs> Henry's listening <laughs> skills zero. <laughs> hey, um, so let's the a complete and working version of the program is now displayed on the whiteboard. Students are free to copy from this solution program, although code may not play well with the code they've already written, providing an additional challenge or opportunity for discussion. Set in the IJ loop. Do that uh, in there. That'll be it. Okay. Well, we want to do it after we get out of those loops, after we've run through those loops in there and gotten the average. So this gets that average color, or at least sums up all the colors. Then once we get done summing all the colors, once we get done for every pixel, once we get done, we're going to create that new average. And the order could be a little bit different here. Stephanie did hers different, but it should work just fine. And then this sets that picture, that column and row, to that new average color. Here. Ultimately, students will have additional time at home to prepare their final version of the program for uploading to the course server. Students who have additional questions can contact the instructor by email or after school before submitting their assignment. As a teacher new to this course, I'm still identifying what classroom strategies will provide the best opportunities for my students. Strategies that both challenge them and give them the support they need when they get stuck. This video has shown a strategy that includes 1. A whiteboard-based overview 2. Whiteboard-based pseudocode 3 freestyle coding for advanced students, four, template-based support for intermediate students, and five, solution-based support for students who need more support. This general approach for presenting an assignment seems to be working well with my students. For questions or comments, please contact rwhite at crashwhite.com. Thanks. Infinite loop, yay! Uh, you should be showing both. Why are you doing this to me, Java? Java, why? For some reason, it's getting like.